For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. For all No Identity merchandise, hats, hoodies and t-shirts, follow the link in the description down below to the No Identity Fan Fiber website. Hey guys, welcome to another Ultimate Team video here on the Chesnoy Gaming channel. Today, I'm going to be updating you a little bit with what my plans are for the Ultimate Team content that I'm putting out on my channel because there is going to be a change coming. But the main point of this particular video is to show you a new feature that's been added to a site run by a couple of friends of mine over on FootWiz, which is actually very, very intriguing. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I love a stat. So uh, let me just quickly switch so I can actually show you the screen. Bear with me. What you can see here on your screen right now is a new feature added to the FootWiz site. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below where you can manually track all of your stats from Weekend League or actually not even from the Weekend League, from Weekend League or from uh, the qualifying tournaments or from divisions or player friend or single match. You can track your stats from all of your various games played on FIFA 17 in so much more detail than you actually can on the in-game menus on FIFA, meaning that you can kind of analyze your own performance so much better than you previously could so that you can see you know which formations you're struggling against which formations you're doing well against uh, maybe judge your own performances on how well you're doing with a specific formation or a specific uh, team rating etc maybe you're better with a cheaper team maybe you're better with a higher rated team as you can see here you can select which uh, number match these. I'm obviously use weekend league as an example here as we're heading into a new weekend league today as you see this. You can select what time of day that you're playing the game as well. So perhaps you play better at a certain time of day compared to others as well. There's so much detail you can go into here to try and figure out you know, the inner workings of your own game and just in general improve as a player. And I will be the first to admit I need to improve as a player so I'm hoping this new feature on the Footwish site can actually help me improve as, uh, as a player and become more successful, you know, win more games, know when to play, when not to play, how to play against certain formations, how not to play against certain uh, teams, if there's a higher rated team I should play a certain way or not, etc. You can select whether you're at home or away, maybe that makes a difference for you, I'm not sure, uh, whether it went to extra time penalties, whether you got a rage quit, etc. And then you can select uh, your stats from the game and your opponent's stats from the game with uh, remarkable accuracy. Obviously you can select the formation, the overall team rating, that, uh, that you'll have to make a mental note of or uh, take a picture of, etc. as you're going into the game. Because, of course, you won't be able to go back and see what someone's team overall team rating was before uh, after you've been in the game. Obviously, when it shows you their opponent, it will show the chemistry and the overall rating. So, for example, 100 chem team with an 88 overall rating, 188 rated team. You see where I'm coming from? And I'll, I'll show you the two teams that I'm planning on using in my foot weekend, in my foot champions weekend upcoming and you'll be able to I'll, I'll cover that again so you can see the overall team rating etc and then you can just use the, the normal match stats feature at the end of the game to uh, just before you exit the game total to uh, go through and add in the goals and the shots on target possession tackles fouls corners passing accuracy yellow cards red cards and then if you go onto the player ratings tab you can see things like how many saves the goalkeeper made um you'll just have to make a mental note however of how many times you or your opponent hit the post how the goals were scored, if they were scored from goal uh, corners, uh, free kicks or penalties, etc. Or maybe even like you could put you had two penalties, but you only scored one, which would mean that you'd missed a penalty. You can keep track of that. Once you've filled out that form, you then log this match, as you can see down here in the bottom left. You can at any point just clear the data from the whole thing if you want to start again. Then it will log that into your weekend league overview, which you'll be able to see uh, here as it loads. Now, uh, Footwiz Dan went and uh, as a kind of a test run last weekend, added some stats in of his own. And I'll show you that in a moment. But here it will give you the overview, and I'll run through that in more detail in a second. And uh, you can then archive your current data. So uh, say you've played 10 games and you want to just archive that as like Friday's set of games. You can then save it with a name, uh, say Foot Champions Weekend, uh, 3rd of March 2017, Friday games. You can save that and uh, refer back to it at any point via your uh, FootWiz account that you'll be logged into. Now, the uh, the thing that Dan did last weekend, this is what it looks like with uh, the archive data, etc. It really shows you in such great detail exactly what's going on with 
your games that you're playing and how you can see what's going on with your opponents as well. So you can kind of get a, a good gauge of, like we say, who you play well against, who you don't play well against, etc. You can see Dan played eight games here, won six of them and lost two, which is an overall win percentage of 75%, shown in a pie chart and as a percentage here as well that you can hover over also to get the, uh, the numbers. He scored 21 goals from 64 shots, 50, 50 of which were on target. All This whole archive screen will be uh, calculated for you, by the way. Once you've manually entered the data it will, and you log it, it will automatically uh, total up all the tallies, etc. for you. You don't have to do any sort of complicated maths like you would trying to figure out an Excel spreadsheet or something. But uh, you can see he scores from, on average, 32.81% of his goals from shots, 42% of his shots on target, ended up going into the back of the net, had an average of eight shots per game, average of six on target per game, no goals scored from corners, free kicks or penalties, which is interesting from a full eight games played, which is probably quite rare actually, uh, to have eight games and no goals scored from a corner, free kick or penalty is particularly rare. And then you can see the individual match stats with regards to fouls and corners and tackles and average possession, etc. You can see kind of, with regards to the, uh, the time played, you can see when he's winning most of his games and when he's not winning most of his games. You see one more around about midday and then one more at midnight than he did in the two play sessions he had uh, in the middle, of the, in the, middle of, the, uh, of the evening or afternoon. Had one win at 3pm and 4pm and then one win between 8pm and 9pm but was winning more around about midnight. You can see he got two wins there and even 1am... Uh, the previous morning was able to pick up a win there as well. So clearly Dan plays well as the uh, the, the hands on the clock point directly upwards. Or well, that was what you would perhaps presume from having a look at his stats. You can see he uh, hit the post five times in those eight games, which means he was hitting the post on as an average of 0 0.6 per game. Now his opponent's stats, you can see here, you can see it compares your stats with that of your opponents over the course of of however many games that you log. So the average that, uh, or in the eight games, Dan was had 21 goals con compared to tw uh, 12 conceded there, as you can see. Interestingly, both he and his opponents had 64 shots total in those eight games. So uh, that's actually remarkably accurate for them to both have 64 shots, or not both, obviously him and his eight opponents to total 64 shots at the same time. He's having better shots on target and goals from shots and goals from shots on target, obviously, ratio than his opponents and keeping them relatively low as well, as you can see there. So uh, uh, he was having an average of eight shots per game, obviously, considering total shots is the same, then the average shots per game is the same, but he was um, having more shots on target of those eight than his average opponent and uh, conceded the one corner from those eight games whilst not obviously scoring any of his own. His actual percentage of average possession is worse than uh, his average the, uh, the average for his team. Obviously, it's only 50-50, so obviously it's going to be worse, but you know what I mean. Uh, his, present his possession percentage average is, uh, is lower than 50, so it's worse than his opponents. Not putting in as many tackles either. Not winning as many corners. But equally, considering he's not putting in as many tackles, he's not committing as many fouls. So whilst that one's shown in red, actually, that's probably better than it would be uh, the other way around. And uh, equally, it shows in red for yellow cards, but it's obviously better to have a, uh, a better uh, disciplinary record than it is to have more cards than not. So obviously that helps. And uh, frustratingly, the uh, hit the post thing is shown in green here. He's hit the post. Obviously, it's just done on a higher number scale, uh, scale so it's easier to, to show you the stats in general. But uh, he's hit the post five times, and his uh, opponent didn't hit the post at all in any of the eight games that uh, were played. None of his eight opponents hit the post. He had one rage quit, which is interesting. Not Unfortunately, I don't... Oh, no, game data. Would this be... There you go. You can see... I was just thinking that in my head. Can you see the results from those games? Yes, you can. Uh, you can see which, it was the second game that was the rage quit. There you see the, the Y on the quit. And uh, won 2-0, 3-0, although that's probably counted from the rage quit. Unless, well, no, because it's manually entered. So I, I presume Dan was 3-0 up then in that game. Uh, obviously, it in-game on FIFA, if someone rage quits, it defaults to a 3-0 victory. Dan may just have coincidentally been 3-0 up at the point of the rage quit. Uh, lost one game by four goals to three, then 1-4-2, 4-1, 2-1, 3-2. 
and uh, obviously, unfortunately, in the only game he didn't score, wasn't able to hold out for a nil-nil draw, picked up a 2-0 defeat. So you can track your stats in such remarkable detail, and I'm very much looking forward, considering, like I say, I do love a stat, I'm very much looking forward to uh, keeping track of my weekend league this weekend, and I'll perhaps do another video on this after the weekend and show you my specific stats from uh, this weekend upcoming. I'm actually, it's quite geeky, but I'm actually really looking forward to keeping a track of all my stats and seeing what the results are at the end. So I'll go back to that and uh, have a closer look at it. I'll switch now into, um, into FIFA and uh, I'll show you the teams that I'm going to be using this weekend on, uh, on my channel for the Foot Champions weekend. And those of you that are regulars here to the Ultimate Team videos, I'll give you a quick update as to what's happening with my Ultimate Team content because there, e there are going to be changes happening as of right now. So let me just as I punch the uh, Sky Remote. Let me just quickly jump back to FIFA 17 and I'll catch up with you in a sec. Now, those of you that are eagle-eyed will uh, recognize the fact that this is not my uh, account that I've been doing the Road to Glory on. The reasoning for that is, uh, unfortunately, the Road to Glory is gonna be coming to a close. Uh, I was having, basically, the reasoning behind it. Obviously, we'd been playing Foot Champions for the past three or four weekends, and because I started the Road to Glory so much later in the year, we found ourselves a long way behind uh, with regards to the coin total we had and the quality of play that we could buy with regards to players that we were coming up against. And it was becoming increase more and more increasingly frustrating each weekend to, uh, to just not being able to compete with everybody on, uh, on Foot Champions. So I made the decision to stop the RTG there and for FIFA 18, I will start an Ultimate Team Road to Glory right at the very beginning of the year so that uh, I can compete right from the very off. And when we get to this point of the FIFA year, obviously we'll have a much larger uh, coin stack and we'll be able to sign players that are of a lot higher quality, etc. And uh, I'll be able to do a variety of other things that I haven't yet, or I hadn't yet got to the stage of being able to do, like the squad builder challenges and maybe pack openings, etc. That obviously without using FIFA points that perhaps we could have done uh, in that series. So the RTG at present is going to stop but Ultimate Team videos on the channel will not stop. I have qualified for uh, the Foot Champions tournament on uh, my main account, and I'll still be uploading my Foot Champions weekend games on the channel from my main account now, rather than the uh, other second account. Mainly because I have, this is the account that obviously I've put a lot of money into with regards to FIFA points, etc. I have the quality of player available to me, and I feel that I can do my best with the players that I have available to me on this account, rather than the very, very basic players I had on the RTG. And the general gist of it is, it's a lot more fun for me to play uh, on this account than it was the RTG with regards to foot champions. And at the end of the day, my job is about having fun and making fun content for you guys. And it, I'm sure you would rather... I enjoyed myself and that you guys got to see me do better in Foot Champions than struggling to get into Gold 3, which is what has happened the past couple of weeks with regards to the RTG account. If I'm pushing Elite with regards to 29 wins, then that's obviously going to be more entertaining and we get better packs, etc. And uh, like I say, in uh, FIFA 18, I will start the RTG, RTG right at the very beginning of, this, of, the, uh, of the year, of the FIFA year, so that we can uh, compete at this stage like I am now on this account. But obviously, theoretically, we could get to this stage on uh, on an account with amazing players without having spent money on the team, which obviously I have done on this account. But there are no restrictions for uh, foot champions this upcoming weekend. I'll quickly show you on the schedule that, or I'll quickly show you that on the schedule, so you can see. Uh, no requirements for this upcoming weekend in uh, foot champions. Similarly, with next weekend as well, and uh, the weekend after that hasn't yet been uh, hasn't yet been shown, but. Obviously, if we reach gold, which I'd very much like to do, in uh, in the weekend league, we will auto-qualify and we won't need to worry about these qualification tournaments, one of which has restrictions, one of which doesn't. I actually qualified for uh, foot champions this weekend by getting promotion out of Division 2 into Division 1. So uh, you can either qualify for foot champions, of course, by uh, winning the one of the daily knockout tournaments, or if you are in Division 2 and you win promotion into Division 1, then you will get qualification for foot champions or if you're already in division one and you play a full season and avoid relegation you hold your league in division one so you get 14 points then you will 
uh, you will qualify for foot champions as well, providing you avoid relegation in Division 1. So you can qualify via divisions or the daily knockout tournaments. And unfortunately, I was too late to the daily knockout tournaments and I don't have an MLS team, which is the, the tournament that is currently ongoing. So I had to do it via divisions. And thankfully, I was able to win promotion from Division 2 last night as I record this, which was Wednesday night. So you'll be seeing this Friday evening. And the teams that I currently have and the teams that have gotten me uh, qualified are as follows. This is a, a Premier League team that you've seen before, but I've actually upgraded it a little bit, I think, since you last saw it. I've got David De Gea in goal. Uh, second in form, Seamus Coleman at right back. You see, I've played a lot of games with this account or with this uh, particular team. It's probably the team that I've gotten on best with in my entire FIFA history on Ultimate Team. Apart from maybe an all Barcelona team back on FIFA 10, this is probably the best team that I've gotten on with so far in my FIFA career. I've got Chris Morning at centre-back. He's played 92 games. Um... Lauren Koscielny, he came in after I was using someone else at centre-back. Uh, second in for Marcus Alonso, wasn't sure whether to bring him in or not. Decided to, fantastic left-back. Highly recommend that you pick him up if you can. Don't know how expensive he would be right now. I did have in form Yaya Torre and upgraded him to the man of the match. Wonderful cards and compliments uh, Kante on this left-hand side of midfield. Very, very well indeed. I did have the 84 rated in form Kante after upgrading from the original 81 card and then obviously he got the 83 upgrade which meant that his inform got boosted up to 85 rated overall and uh, that's why I paid like 300k for the 84 a few weeks ago and uh, I don't think even since the upgrade his price has actually dropped a little bit I think since then but Kante one of the best if not the best holding midfielder on the game. At present on the left hand side we have 91 rated uh, upgraded player of the month, Eden Hazard. 32 assists and 16 goals in 124 games for me. Obviously playing left mid rather than left wing or left forward. He's not quite as influential with regards, with regards to the goals or assists, but I very much like playing with Eden Hazard, as you might well expect me, with me being a Chelsea fan. On the right-hand side, I'm currently using Inform Willian. Again, love this card. 13 goals and 14 assists in 57 games. Uh, at Cam, I was previously using Kevin De Bruyne, currently using uh, second in form, no, sorry, third in form Christian Eriksen. His price has dropped since I bought him a while ago, a few weeks ago again. He's played nearly 50 games, 18 goals, 10 assists. I'm contemplating swapping him out for man of the match Mkhitaryan, depending on how expensive Mkhitaryan is, uh, is and whether I can actually afford to buy him. Uh, I would definitely contemplate taking Christian Eriksen out and putting him in. That's a position that... I, I may even look for perhaps a legend to go in there. I'm not entirely too sure. It depends how much money I've got and who's available. Sergio Aguero, though, is probably one of my favourite strikers so far this year on Ultimate Team. 64 games played, 51 goals and 9 assists. Not necessarily involved in the build-up, low assists, but always on the end of the chances, a number of goals. The other side is actually on the bench there for fitness, but I'll, I've uh, got two separate squads set up, so the other one is on the bench for this one. I am going to have to replace uh, Rio Ferdinand at some point. Actually, I think David De Gea might need a fitness card or he's on 94. It'd be right. I might need to... Well, I will need to replace Rio Ferdinand at centre-back here. And I'm, as of yet, unsure as to who to use. Now, I could use any legend. But I believe I would need, if it wasn't a legend, a Spanish centre-back because... De Gea wouldn't get full chem if they weren't Spanish or Premier League. And I don't know if I make it Premier League whether Ramos would still be on full chem. He might be because of the Spanish link to Iniesta, but I'd need to fiddle around and play with the team to figure that out. I could potentially go and get uh, informed Cesar Apeliqueta at centre-back, so it'd be Spanish and Premier League, and would link, obviously, with De Gea. And Aurier's chemistry will be all right because he has the strong link with Di Maria, which would counteract the weak link with, uh, with whichever centre-back goes in there, which is obviously why Di Maria's on full chem with uh, the... the the dead link to Luis Suarez. So we've got the same De Gea in goal, obviously. Uh, Serge Aurier at right back. He's played nine games so far. This is a relatively new squad. Obviously, it was a 20-game Rio Ferdinand. He's played nine for me. Ramos, I've bought and sold about seven different Sergio Ramoses throughout the course of uh, FIFA 17 Ultimate Team. Probably my favourite centre-back on the game, to be fair. At the minute, I've got uh, team of the group stage Felipe Luis at left back. I was contemplating getting Jordi Alba, but because... Uh, I need an Atleti player, I think. No, actually, I might not need an Atleti player now because I've got Michael Owen up top. I did have Edinson Cavani up top, 90-rated Edinson Cavani. We didn't really get on with him, which meant I need an ad needed an Atleti player 
to uh, link with Carrasco to get him full chem. Again, similarly with the Di Maria and Aurier, he needed the strong link to counteract the dead link, but he wouldn't have any dead links now, so I could I could change Felipe Luis out for Jordi Alba, but Felipe Luis has been brilliant for me, so I, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. Unexpected uh, players playing at CDM, both Paul Scholes and Andre Iniesta. Scholes with the one goal and three assists in nine games, but I prefer to have players that are physical enough to put challenges in and have okay defensive stats that are good on the ball and can play play good creative football, which is why Iniesta and Scholes are the two that I've gone with. On the right-hand side, man of the match, uh, Di Maria, nine games, two goals for him and the one assist. Again, because I'm playing mid, right mid and left mid, not right wing or right and left forward, not necessarily as heavily involved in regards to the goals, but their overall build-up play is brutal. And Carrasco actually has five assists in nine games plus two goals. He's been very, very good. However... As you might have expected with Sergio Aguero, the two main players in this team are my two forwards. Luis Suarez has played 16 games, has 15 goals and 12 assists. So he's contributing to almost two goals in every single game. And Michael Owen up top is a new signing. 10 goals for him in six games played with four assists. So I would like to think, so long as I can keep my concentration levels high and not rage too much and play on tilt... I, will, I would like to think I could get at least gold one, which is 25 wins, with these two teams this upcoming weekend. That's the aim. The aim is gold one, and then anything else beyond that is a bonus. So we'll have to wait and see. Let me know in the comment section or even send me pictures on Twitter of uh, which teams you're going to be using for your uh, ultimate team uh, foot champions weekend this particular weekend. And fingers crossed you guys can get on quite well as well. Obviously, let me know what you think of the uh, the Footwiz edition as well. I will most definitely be using that. Let me know in the comment section if you'll be using it too. But for now, that's going to be all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any more videos. My footage from Foot Champions will start next week on Monday. I'll be playing uh, the games over the weekend, of course. But there will be still two career mode videos every single day uh, over the weekend. And obviously in the days where there isn't currently a career mode slot in the evening. That's where this series comes in. But there's at least one career mode video, if not two, every single day of the week. Check the description for my schedule or the About tab on the channel page, and that will show you my schedule as well. But for now, eventually, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.